Imagine standing at the crossroads of history, where ancient wisdom meets modern thought. What if the answers to life's most profound questions lie not in divine scripture, but in the very essence of what it means to be human? As we journey through the fascinating evolution of humanism, we'll explore its roots, the revolutionary ideas that shaped it, and the ways it challenges us to redefine our understanding of existence. Are you ready to unravel the threads of a philosophy that has inspired countless thinkers and movements, urging us to seek meaning in a seemingly chaotic world? Join me as we delve into this captivating narrative that invites reflection, ignites curiosity, and ultimately challenges our perspectives on life itself. Humanism is a vibrant philosophy that celebrates individual potential and societal progress, weaving a rich tapestry throughout history. Picture the Italian Renaissance, a period where the revival of ancient texts sparked a cultural renaissance, infusing new life into humanistic ideals. This era marked a transformation, as scholars, inspired by classical wisdom, ignited a movement that would redefine the human experience. With the arrival of the Age of Enlightenment, humanism evolved, intertwining with scientific advancements and instilling a deep sense of confidence in humanity's ability to decipher the mysteries of the universe. As the 20th century unfolded, humanist organizations emerged across Europe and America, promoting a vision centered on human well-being, freedom, and dignity. This modern perspective emphasized collective responsibility, urging individuals to foster personal growth while respecting the inherent worth of every person. Distancing itself from religious affiliations, contemporary humanism adopted a secular stance, advocating for knowledge through reason and science. Advocates argued for an ethical framework independent of divine authority, championing human rights and democratic values. The term humanism has an intriguing etymology, originating from the Latin humanitis. In ancient Rome, this term encapsulated the values of liberal education, a concept that remains vital in academia today. During the Renaissance, Omanista signified a resurgence of classical learning that profoundly influenced Western thought. The 18th century further expanded this meaning, as the term came to reflect a rigorous academic approach alongside a broader life philosophy. Delving into the essence of humanism reveals a spectrum of interpretations. Some view humanists as social reformers dedicated to improving living conditions, while others, like Jeannie D. Fowler, highlight the rejection of divine mandates in favor of human freedom. In recent discussions, Thinkers like Andrew Copson emphasize humanism's naturalistic roots and moral commitment to enhancing lives. The foundations of humanism stretch back to ancient Greek philosophy, where figures like Protagoras initiated a shift towards understanding existence through reason rather than myth. Socrates championed self-knowledge, directing inquiry towards human well-being. Aristotle and Epicurus advanced ethical frameworks rooted in human nature, while parallel traditions in Chinese philosophy mirrored these values, celebrating individualism and rational thought. The intricate history of humanism continues to evolve, inviting us to contemplate our role within this narrative. As we ponder its future, the questions of how humanism will adapt in an ever-changing world linger, urging deeper exploration into its possibilities. Renaissance humanism ignited a profound intellectual revival in Italy, merging literature, arts, and ancient Greek thought. This movement, rooted in the 13th century, drew strength from the rediscovery of classical texts, enriching Western culture. Central to this transformation was Petrarch, whose passion for education and ancient manuscripts defined humanistic studies, shaping a legacy that still resonates. As Renaissance humanism blossomed, figures like Coluccio Salutati emerged, championing the rediscovery of ancient wisdom and establishing Florence as a hub of intellectual activity. Educators like Vittorino de Feltri laid the groundwork for schools that embraced humanistic principles, shaping pre-university education. The movement didn't stop at literature. It expanded into philosophy, mathematics, and religious studies. Thinkers like Giovanni Pico della Miranda broke from traditional orthodoxy, while initiatives to translate biblical texts bridged ancient knowledge with contemporary thought. By the 15th century, humanism spread beyond Italy, with printing houses flourishing and scholars like Erasmus leading the charge in Northern Europe. The Age of Enlightenment marked another turning point as humanist ideas grew more secular, promoting rationality and scientific inquiry. This period birthed values like tolerance and a critical examination of religion's role in society. Thinkers such as Baruch Spinoza redefined divinity, equating it with nature, while others challenged traditional beliefs, 
framing religion as a construct rooted in fear. Through this rich historical lens, humanism invites us to reflect on our collective journey, illuminating the potential and responsibilities we hold in shaping the future. The quest for understanding, freedom, and human dignity continues, beckoning us to engage with the complexities of our existence and the world around us. What lies ahead for humanism, and how will it adapt to the challenges of tomorrow? The journey of exploration remains ever compelling. As humanity's understanding expanded, Influential texts like Rousseau's The Social Contract began to shift the focus from the collective man to the individual man, weaving personal experience into the broader social fabric. Thomas Paine's rights of man further illustrated this transition, promoting a universal conception of humanity. Influences from Baconian empiricism pushed thinkers such as Thomas Hobbes toward materialistic views of existence, adding depth to this evolving dialogue. Scholar J. Brent Crossan reminds us that humanism is not merely a European phenomenon. It draws from a rich array of intellectual traditions across Africa and Asia. The Enlightenment era, while significant, did not encapsulate all of humanity, as notions of gender and race intricately shaped its ideals. This shift from man to human laid the groundwork for ongoing discussions about identity and inclusion. The 19th century heralded new waves of humanist thought with Auguste Comte proposing a religion of humanity. Although this idea waned, its echoes can be found in the works of figures like Oscar Wilde and George Eliot. With the rise of scientific thought, Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection revolutionized our understanding of humanity's place in nature, challenging traditional theological views on human uniqueness. Utilitarianism, championed by thinkers like Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill, emerged in Britain, advocating for human happiness and the alleviation of suffering. As critiques of theism gained traction, various ethical societies formed, paving the way for contemporary humanism. The late 19th century saw the rise of rationalist and ethical associations, and by the 20th century, humanism had gained prominence through influential philosophers such as A.J. Eyre and Bertrand Russell. In 1963, the British Humanist Association united various ethical and rationalist groups, reflecting a growing movement across Europe exemplified by organizations like the Dutch Humanist Alliance and the Norwegian Humanist Association. Meanwhile, the U.S. humanist movement flourished, significantly influenced by the Unitarian Church, leading to the establishment of the American Humanist Association in 1941. The convergence of these organizations formed the International Humanist and Ethical Union, now known as Humanist International, which advocates for humanist principles globally. Humanism has flourished in myriad forms, each reflecting its unique cultural and philosophical contexts. Religious humanism, which emerged in the early 20th century, particularly in the United States, intertwined ethical values with spiritual practices, finding expression among groups like the Quakers. Renaissance humanism, with its focus on classical antiquity, laid essential groundwork for modern humanism, though its interpretations differ significantly today. Christian humanism, blending faith with classical learning, celebrated human dignity within a religious framework, while ethical humanism emphasized relationships and moral culture, responding to the need for a human-centered ethical framework. Scientific humanism, promoted by figures like John Dewey and Julian Huxley, championed rational thought and the scientific method. Secular humanism, coined in the mid-20th century, represents a naturalistic worldview that has shed its earlier derogatory connotations. Meanwhile, Marxist humanism critiques traditional humanism from a leftist perspective, focusing on social and economic dimensions. More recently, digital humanism has emerged, advocating for human values amid rapid technological advancements. At the heart of humanism lies a commitment to rationality, asserting that humans possess the capacity for reason. This perspective fosters a sense of autonomy, suggesting that beliefs and actions emerge from individual reasoning, transcending race and social status. Immanuel Kant's philosophy advocates for moral autonomy based on human experiences, proposing an ethical framework that adapts to diverse cultures. Corliss Lamont, in The Philosophy of Humanism, emphasizes that humanist ethics prioritize human interests and happiness, celebrating the vast spectrum of human experiences. The evolution of humanist morality has notably shifted since the 18th century. Early humanists leaned toward objective ethics, influenced by utilitarianism and Kantian thought. However, as societal values evolved, humanist ethics increasingly embraced secularism, civil rights, and multiculturalism. Critics often argue that without a divine foundation, 
moral standards lack legitimacy. Dostoevsky's character Ivan Karamazov famously questioned whether morality can exist independently of God, but humanists contend that true moral understanding can flourish without religious frameworks. The Euthyphro dilemma further illustrates this inquiry. Is something good because God commands it, or does God command it because it is good? This exploration supports the belief that humans can attain moral insight independent of religious dictates, suggesting that morality is a human construct shaped by culture and experience. While humanism often appears in tension with religion, the relationship is more nuanced. Philosopher David Klein traces this tension back to the Renaissance, when humanistic ideas began challenging the church's authority, prioritizing human knowledge. Figures like Copernicus, Kepler, and Galileo exemplified this shift, empowering individuals to shape their destinies. Stephen Law highlights that humanist adherence to secularism positions it against dominant religions that seek to maintain historical privileges. Critics argue this stifles religious expression, but Law contends that it safeguards freedoms by questioning the privileged status of religious views. Andrew Copson notes that humanism can coexist with certain religious beliefs, advocating for tolerance and curiosity about religion's societal role rather than hostility. As humanism continues to evolve, it invites us to explore new horizons and adapt to the complexities of the modern world. The journey is far from over, and the enduring philosophy of humanism remains a compelling framework for understanding our shared humanity. As religion's influence waned in the 19th century, the search for meaning in life surged into the spotlight. Humanism doesn't prescribe a single answer. Instead, it encourages individuals to carve out their own significance. Philosophers like Nietzsche and Sartre wrestled with this theme, while Albert Camus, in The Myth of Sisyphus, underscored the power of personal agency in creating meaning, even in an absurd world. The interpretations of meaning within humanism are diverse, encompassing the pursuit of happiness, building connections with others, and engaging with history. Scholars like Peter Dirks and Anthony B. Pinn emphasize that moral purpose, emotional bonds, and the quest for understanding lie at the heart of a meaningful life. In the public sphere, contemporary humanism ardently champions secularism, advocating for equal treatment of all citizens, regardless of their religious beliefs. Philosopher Alan Hayworth argues that secularism nurtures diversity and counteracts the irrationality often linked with nationalism and totalitarianism. Humanism is rooted in liberalism and socialism, with early 19th century socialism closely mirroring humanistic values. As the 20th century unfolded, humanistic interpretations of Marxism focused on alleviating alienation rather than adhering strictly to scientific socialism. In psychology and counseling, humanistic psychology, inspired by thinkers like Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow, emphasizes self-actualization and creativity while addressing existential concerns. Emerging in post-World War II Europe, this approach promotes a positive and respectful perspective in counseling, prioritizing the client's worldview and moral inquiries. Organizations like the British Association for Counseling and Psychotherapy have roots in humanism, embedding these principles in modern psychological practices. The landscape of humanism is richly varied, reflecting a spectrum of philosophical inquiries and cultural dialogues. As we navigate contemporary challenges, Humanism continues to inspire us to seek meaning, foster ethical relationships, and champion human dignity in an ever-evolving world. Examining the demographics of humanists offers intriguing insights, though research remains somewhat limited. Findings from Yasmin Trejo's analysis, based on the Pew Research Center's 2014 Religious Landscape Study, reveal that a significant majority of humanists identify as atheist, 37%, or agnostic, 18%. Around 29% describe their beliefs as nothing in particular, while 16% identify as religious. Notably, approximately 80% were raised in a religious environment, indicating a substantial shift toward secular or humanistic beliefs. About 60% of humanists are married to non-religious partners, and the demographic skews predominantly male, with 67% identifying as male. Additionally, humanists generally possess higher education levels and socioeconomic status, with a majority being non-Hispanic white. Yet, humanism is not without its critiques. Some Western and Christian critics argue that humanism embodies a Western ethos that undermines ethical diversity, potentially leading to neocolonialism. Feminists and activists contend that it reflects the biases of its predominantly white, heterosexual male founders, sidelining marginalized voices. 
Scholars like Talal Assad suggest that humanism continues to uphold Western Christian traditions, reinforcing dominance in moral discussions. Critics also claim that the focus on empathy can obscure deeper issues of justice, limiting humanism's effectiveness in addressing systemic inequalities. From another perspective, some evangelical critics argue that humanism promotes materialism, fostering greed and selfishness. This emphasis on scientific rationality is seen by some as leading to a purely materialistic worldview, although proponents maintain that humanism values human experience beyond material concerns. Many find humanism difficult to define, citing its ambiguity and plurality of meanings, which critics argue dilutes its significance. Anti-humanism, championed by thinkers like Nietzsche and Marx, critiques the foundational assumptions of humanism, with Marx rejecting the notion of a fixed human essence. Humanist organizations play a pivotal role in advancing humanist values globally. Notable groups include Humanists International, advocating for humanist principles worldwide, and Humanists UK, formerly the British Humanist Association, which promotes secularism and organizes non-religious ceremonies. The American Humanist Association, AHA, founded in 1941, actively engages in social issues to raise awareness and support for secularism. Prominent figures like Richard Dawkins and Stephen Fry further amplify humanist thought, championing secularism and scientific inquiry. As humanism continues to evolve, its myriad interpretations and applications invite ongoing exploration and dialogue, encouraging us to reflect on what it means to be human in an ever-changing world. As we conclude this exploration of humanism, we find ourselves at a pivotal moment where the past informs our present and shapes our future. This philosophy rich in diversity and insight, continues to challenge us to seek meaning, foster connection, and embrace our shared humanity. So, what will you take away from this journey? How will the principles of humanism inspire you to navigate the complexities of your own life? The questions linger, inviting us to reflect and engage in the ongoing dialogue about what it truly means to be human.